The topics I have is like football and uh, singing. Right. And then everything yeah. else in between will cover kind of thing. Okay. Because it thoughts? will loop back to like before and after life. Okay. So pre-football, I was normal, and then that's how I got into singing. So just yeah, no, we we can start literally now because it's a conversation. Oh. Yeah, because oh. most some of them just kind of just start like that. Okay. So when you say normal, what do you mean normal? No health issues. Okay, right. No health issues at all. And what are your health issues? Um, I have a few. So when I was normal, that's when I used to play football. I used to run for Blackheath Harriers and I swam nationally. And then when I was about 11 or 12, they thought I had a swimming injury because my rib was sticking out. All so right. a couple of weeks went by, things just weren't getting better. So I went to the doctors and then they found a curve in my spine. So then I went for x-rays and then they found out I had scoliosis, um, but it was idiopathic scoliosis. So it means it's not genetic. There was no accident. It just happened for no reason. Right. And you can live with that. You can actually live with it and be absolutely fine. But mine um, went downhill within six months. I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything. And I had to wear like this body brace. It was like thick, hard plastic for 23 hours a day. Wow. So the one hour I didn't wear it, I swam. And um, yeah, that's kind of when everything started with me. Yeah. Was that still at the age of 12 then or 11, 12? Yeah, I had this, uh, so I had to have spinal surgery, um, wow. which was T1 to L4, so that's like three quarters of your spine. Um, they put two metal rods and 18 bolts wow. to hold me together. Um, but when I had the surgery, it went well. I mean, it didn't go well, because um, I died like twice, and my organs just Jesus. shut down, mm. and then I had three blood transfusions. But I had no prior health issues, so they couldn't understand why, and then, I was paralyzed for a year, which also wasn't normal because my surgery went well. Then they found out I had Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So EDS for short. Wow. So I'm just taking all that in. That's, yeah, that's quite a lot. Yeah. Um, how, do, how does that affect your normal day-to-day -day life? Um, well, yeah, I'm not normal, so I have to have a lot of adaptions. Even down to, I can never drive a manual because I had a muscular stroke. Mm. So nothing to do with the brain, just literally down my left side. So I don't have the same strength as my right. Um, yeah, like even in school, I couldn't do a full day. So right. when I was paralysed, they were like, that's when they found out I had EDS. Um, and I was in a very low place because going from football, swimming, doing hurdles to nothing mm. was quite a dark time. And um, yeah. I kind of had to make a choice. Did I want to just self-pity and stay there? Or do I actually want to do something and do my physio? Because I would stay in hospital for like three months at a time, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and I finally got into a positive mindset. And that's when I started walking again, managing my pain, my dislocations, I started to learn to put back in myself. Wow. Um, and what age was this? Were you kind 14, of just, yeah. around 14. Um, yeah, that's, wow. that's when I started to self-manage. <clears throat> and, and which organs kind of failed during the surgery? Oh, random. Well, my heart gave way and I think part of my liver, I feel it was my liver. Um, but then like four years ago, randomly my gallbladder just died. Your what, sorry? My gallbladder. Okay, right. Do you know what? I don't know. <laughs> so it processes <laughs> all your foods. Okay, right. Um, all your nutrients and all of that kind of stuff. And that's different to your bladder? Yeah, yeah, it's okay, right, yeah, yeah, gallbladder is, it's all obviously connected, but it's connected yeah. to your liver. So you've got like bile ducts that connect every organ. Okay, right. Um, and yeah, mine just failed. Jeez, so yeah, yeah, I had to have emergency surgery to have it removed and part of my liver. Yeah. And can EDS affect anyone? No, you're born with it. Oh, so you are. trauma has to present itself. Yeah. So my idiopathic scoliosis, happened and that's when like the EDS kicked in. Okay, right. So uh, yeah. there's like six different types of it. So you get like the mild where you have subluxions, dislocations, and then the worst is like organ failure. Basically you have a life expectancy and at the end you won't be able to, you'll be fed through a tube, you'll breathe through a tube, all of that. 
happens. If you don't mind me asking, what, what is the life expectancy normally? 38 is the longest person. And, and how old are you? 28. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah. I understand, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, does it, what, how do you cope with it on a day-to-day as well? Now, what what, what normal mean, things you, you find difficult? Everything, even how I get out of bed. So I have to go on my side yeah. to then sit up. Um, yeah, everything. I have a lot of adaptions, but I just style them out so people wouldn't even know their adaptions. Um, but on like my bad day when I can't really walk, I just stay home. I understand, yeah. Um, you played football? Yeah. What, what yeah. age was that? That was from young. Literally till the day, 11 years old, when I couldn't anymore. Um, played for all the districts. Wow. Um, and then it was literally, I don't even think I had a full season at Charlton before things like I couldn't. Because where my rib cage is twisted, I don't have one lung. So it's compromised, so I only have one functioning lung. Okay, right. But even like, I could feel my body slowly just not working. But yes, I didn't get a full season at Charlton, but I played. <laughs> no, fair enough. That's, that's, that's still quite a good accomplishment, definitely, yeah. 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 Did you start that quite young then? Yeah. Is that, yeah. Is that like a, someone in your family pushing you towards football? Or? Yeah, my dad, very good footballer, and my nice. brothers. So I was, I'm the youngest of four. So yeah, it's definitely so from it's a football them. family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you follow it? It got hard because I couldn't play it. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, my son's into football like crazy. He's actually training at Charlton this week. Nice, yeah. Um, so it was nice to go back. But yeah, I started to follow it the last few years again. But I'm an Arsenal supporter and my whole family's Tottenham. So. Wow, that's a big clash, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> and you're an amazing singer. I'd say definitely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> From what I've seen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've just started getting back into singing now. Is that something that's always been kind of part of your life? Yeah, actually it has. Um, when I was younger, I used to do a lot of singing, I think it's the Royal Albert Hall I did. Nice. There was like six of us who got chosen, um, and that was good. And, but it wasn't my passion at that age. It was sports. But when I couldn't do sports anymore, I was like, oh, let me tap into that. <laughs> let me start singing again. Um, but even in my videos, I'm sitting on a stool. Um, because I can't stand for long periods of time. Okay, right. And even in one of my videos, my jaw dislocates. Wow. Yeah, and you see me go like this and push it back <laughs> in. Um, but like, I can't hold a mic for too long. So even those little things are adaptions. Yes. Yeah. Start them out. And how's the singing itself? Because I know you have to use your lungs, etc. It's hard. Yeah. It is hard. So, but I mean, I make songs my own. So that kind of helps me because... What people think I'm just doing it as a style is mm. actually not. It's because I can't do certain notes at certain times. Wow. And so you have to adapt. Like that. Yeah. That's nice, yeah. Have you ever, have you ever written songs yourself? Or? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Quite a few? Yeah. Oh, nice, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a whole yeah. other talent itself, yeah. Singing and writing as well. It's, yeah. It's good, yeah. Yeah. What's your goals in, in singing? Is that something you, you take very seriously? I did. Yeah. I did. And I did quite well, what was it, nine, ten years ago, I did really well. Um, things happened, mm. I think the major thing, I got really ill um, and I couldn't perform. I was getting paid to sing, I was doing my YouTube when YouTube wasn't popping. Um, but yeah, there was a few physical blocks in my way mm. and then I just couldn't, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. But yeah, I don't know if I want to become big. I just want to put my music out there to help heal people and inspire them. The that's, next generation, I think, yeah. need it. And where can we find your music? Um, my old stuff, YouTube. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Are you going to release anything else, like Spotify or anything like that? Yeah, that is the plan. Yeah. Eventually, to, in the next couple of years. I think the next two years before I'm 30. There's quite a few things I want to do before the time's up, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, no, I understand. <clears throat> I, I want to say, like, you can't look at it that way, but obviously I don't know. Yeah, I think a yeah, lot of people say myself, this to me. Yeah. Even my mum. 
And <coughs> I feel like it's easier to look at it like that than be in denial and be like, oh no, I'm gonna, I'm ready for when the time comes. And if I go past it, mm. then that's all good. I'm happy about that. But you have to make sure, that's why I had my son when I did. Because yeah. if that, if I do pass away at 38, he'll be 18. Everything will be oh, set right. up for him. Um, so I think you need to be realistic. I know I will push past that age because mm -hmm. they said I'd never walk <laughs> and now look. But yeah, just... You've got to stay optimistic. Yeah. yeah. But then be real. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> Are you Christian? No. I'm actually come from a Catholic Hindu background. All right. How, how does that work? My mum's Irish and my dad's Guyanese. Okay, right, right. Yeah. So, yeah. So I was looking at the cross, that's why, yeah. I know, it's the <laughs> mix here. <laughs> right. The Hindu top and the cross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that kind of shows the... Yeah, it yeah, does. Yeah, the, yeah, the does. mix. Yeah. <laughs> and where do you get your... What inspires your fashion sense? Because I know you've got quite a lot of jewellery on. Um, some cool shoes. <laughs> a cool top. <laughs> my heritage, I guess. Okay, right. Um, yeah. Because in Guyana, you get the Indian Caribbeans and they wear nose rings and it's all the jewellery and stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know. My style, a lot of people do say I have a unique style. Yeah. It's just kind of me. If I see it, I like it, I'll put it together. Um, just a mix of everything. Yeah, okay. you've got to express yourself. Yeah. yeah. In, um, you said it's Indian culture? or? Yeah, Indian Caribbean. So in okay. Guyana, it's like the infusion. So it's mostly gold they wear, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of gold, yeah. A lot of gold. <laughs> <laughs> like Indian, well, I, I know Indian gold, I'm not sure about if it's the same. It's similar. So it's, like it's very it's similar. Quite rich gold, yeah, yeah 22 it's carat. Very similar. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what about your hair? Because I can see it's like a, two different. <laughs> Do you know what? That was actually based off my, me as a person being mixed. Okay, right. Um, that. I'm not white enough, I'm not black enough. And back in school, people didn't know what Guyana was. They didn't mm. know it's actually, no, we're Caribbean, so <laughs> we are. Um, yeah. And there was a lot of, yeah, just rubbish. Um, and I learned to embrace it instead of shy away from it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we all look like my dad. Like, if you saw my mum, you would not think she's my mum. Okay, right. So it's very much, I do feel more in touch with my Guyanese side. I love my Irish side, I do. Yeah. Um, but it's just a mix, and I guess that's with my hair, my style. It's just both cultures. So one side could be the Guyanese, one side's the Irish. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's cool. Um, you did a Dr. Martin, is it Pride of it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was good. How was that? that? Was, um, yeah, it was good. It was busy. I did quite a few people. It was... Um, Interesting. What, what were you doing there? Tooth gems. Was, so, oh, tooth gems. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I was doing um, <clears throat> tooth gems, which is one of my jobs. Um, and yeah, so I did like 100 people in like four hours. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about the, the fact of the cancelling culture to do with... I think it's wrong. It's yeah. This... Everyone's so sensitive. Um, and there's a difference between emotions and dealing with stuff and getting the help you need 100%. Mm. But then everyone's allowed an opinion and as soon as you say something a bit different, mm -hmm. you're getting cancelled. So I don't, I don't agree with it. Yeah. Um, I think everyone just needs to be a bit more resilient. Yeah, yeah. I think times have really changed, wouldn't you say? Massively. Yeah. Oh gosh, they have. Because what they happened have. to freedom of speech, you know? Yeah, but yeah. it feels like only certain people can have that freedom of speech yeah. and certain people can't and then it doesn't make any sense it's just yeah it's mm. strange to me it's very strange um and nobody's allowed to have an opinion either mm. which is worrying it's worrying because nobody can make up their own minds they're sheep they're following people um and not actually looking at the situation and making their own minds up yeah i, th I think personally the scariest thing is like if you're in the limelight, it's like you always have to watch what you say. See, yep. I'm gonna say what everyone says. If you put yourself in the limelight, but being <laughs> in the limelight for a little while, yeah. it was like we're talking back when 
TikTok didn't exist, Instagram was not popping, and to get 10,000 views on YouTube was something. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like, if I didn't look a particular way that day, or maybe I sung a bit lower, I'm getting criticised. I'm being told wow. you need to do da 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 and all of this stuff. And I think, why? It's just say something nice or don't say anything at all. Yeah. Um, but I think it's, if you're going to go fully in the limelight, you have to be resilient. I agree, I agree. Because <clears throat> there's even, a lot of people get media training now, just to yeah, avoid them from having to say the wrong things or... I know, which is sad, because yeah. then they can't be their true self and they're kind of caged in, which I get. Yeah, it's just a really it's a weird one, situation. Yeah. No, I agree, I agree. Um, you say that you have to quite, you have to like pop your bones back in at times. Yeah. <laughs> Is that like it, your bones dis, dislocate, dislocate quite a bit? Dislocate, yeah. yeah. Um, so they can sublux and dislocate up to 20 times a day. Wow. Mm. So it happens every single day? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I just, just get on with it. I can't bother to be like, oh, I dislocated this today. And anything like that, it just... Right. Unless it's bad and I can't put it in, then I have to call an ambulance. Yeah. And, um, yeah, they take me to the hospital, realign it, and... Yeah. Uh, is your is your pain threshold quite high then? Yeah. 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 It's, does it not hurt? Or yeah, you kind of, yeah. It hurts. It hurts. Yeah. But then I have to put it back in, so I can't think about oh my my joint is hanging out. Mm. I have to push it in quick before nerves get trapped or circulation starts going. So yeah, you just and some days it it hurts like I will be screaming whilst putting it in. Um, yeah. We just have to just brush it off. Um, what, what inspires you kind of on the day to day or in life? That's a good question. It's a deep one. Mm. What, what does inspire <laughs> me? I mean, one of my jobs, I'm a community engagement manager. So I run three community centres in Greenwich. Wow. And um, is it inspire? I just want to help. So helping people. Um, is a very big thing and putting back in. Um, so doing that and making sure the next generation, a good role model, a good influence, um, and just trying to help where I can. Being a community engagement manager, um, what kind of people do you, do you help? Is it youth or? Everyone. All oh, right, right. Everybody. <laughs> we have like London Deaf Information Service, um, based there, we have refugees, baby groups, elderly groups, literally everybody, every culture, every gender, every age. So anyone in the, com in the anybody, community? Yeah. And I'm trying to bridge the divide because in Greenwich you've got like the affluent and then you've got the poor. Okay, and right. nobody wants to talk to each other. Oh, wow. And nobody, you, you can see the line and it's really upsetting because... You could be very much alike, yeah. you could like the same things, um, but people are just so, since COVID as well, people just don't want to talk to anybody. People don't want to engage, they're just very in their own worlds. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it would help to talk to people. I think so, yeah. Just yeah. even, hi, you're right. Just, a, yeah, and just, they could share stories and help each other, yeah. This yeah. is it, and that's what's missing. No, oh, fair enough, yeah. And what was the first thing you said, that London deaf? London Deaf Information Service. What is the London Deaf Information Service? So they're a deaf charity that all the employees are deaf and they advocate for deaf people. Um, and equality is very big on their list um, because if you think about it, you're not taught sign language in school, but it could save a life. Mm. Um, it's a necessity. I feel like everybody should know the basics of sign language. Um, even down to their interpreters, they have to pay for out of their own pocket. Wow. It's very hard to get an interpreter. Um, even if you go to A&E, wow. it can take hours to get an interpreter. And imagine, you know, because I learned sign language. Um, so I don't, I know a lot um, and I'm still learning. Can you show us something? Like, he hello, how, how are you? I could do fire escape because that's always a good one, you know. This, this, fire yeah. escape. <laughs> so it comes down and then under. All right, cool. cool. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, it's really hard for them to get interpreters. It costs a lot. Um, but if you know the public knew a bit more, yeah, I feel like it would. Yeah, it would help a lot. And it's um, yeah, it's a hard job. They get discriminated a lot. Like right. it's really hard to see they're deaf, but somebody shouting at them. Like it's, I find it very triggering. Cause yeah, it's just offensive. It is. Yeah. Um, but then that comes under discrimination with disabled people. I face it all the time mm. because I don't look disabled. Yeah. I'm not. Or because people don't see me on a bad day or see what I'm dealing with, then therefore I'm not dying or my organs are not failing or my joints don't dislocate. So that's big what I do in the community as well. Because I'm the first ethnic disabled female in my post ever. Wow. Um, so it's just making that first step to trump down these stereotypes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you say you get, um, you know, discriminated. Um, mm. Is that kind of like on the on public transport or on like a... I don't go on public transport. Okay, oh right. my gosh, no. Um, two reasons. <laughs> Physically, it's a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, doesn't help that I have a little fear of lifts. <laughs> so so you're gonna have to explain oh that. Oh my god, it's actually quite deep. So okay, when I was right. in Great Ormond Street, yeah. a big children's hospital, yeah. when I was paralysed, twice this happened. We're in the lift, I'm with my sister, the door just opened and we're halfway up. Wow. Twice. And they weren't the same lift. So I feel like if you can't trust a lift in a children's hospital, <laughs> I'm not trusting no other lift. Yeah. That's, so, that's a big worry. Yeah. That's where it comes. And I'm in a wheelchair, like, I'm literally defenceless. Like, what can I do? Mm. <clears throat> I can't just, I can't do nothing. I can't stand up and run and get through the gap. It's horrible. So I avoid lifts. Um, <laughs> but that ties in with going on, you know, trains and stuff. I will yeah. force my, if I have to get on a train, I will force myself to walk stairs. Because also, I don't want someone to go look at me, a woman with a buggy, and look at me and think, why am I waiting for a lift? I get that a lot. Wow, yeah. yeah. And... I would never, if I would stand, I would rather stand and hurt myself than ask for a disabled seat. Seriously? Because, yeah, the stuff I get with it. And then it, I get upset and like... I, c I can imagine that's very frustrating. Yeah, it is, yeah. it is. And especially how I look in my style. Mm. I'm, all, I'm alternative, I have piercings, I have tattoos, my hair's two different colours. <laughs> so it doesn't really... People think disabled people are just don't look all right or don't yeah. look after themselves, mm. which is also very offensive. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I think people believe they can see disabilities. Yeah. I have seen them badges that go around and you know. Yeah, I just, I what, just what, what are your thoughts on that? Um, Sorry, the badges that, um, what do they say again? Like, I, I have a disability. Uh, yeah, I have a disability mm. in the lanyards as well. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, I just don't, I don't like, I just, yeah. Do you think they work? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I think they work. It's a step in the right direction. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll wear one one day. <laughs> see how that goes down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it would be it would be quite sad if if I think I've seen people wearing them on the train and the people don't really pay attention anyway. So it's quite yeah. It's still it's still quite hard. I'm sure. Yeah, I think it's that people just think. I, don't, I get it a lot. They just think I'm pretentious or high maintenance, mm. which I'm far from that. Yeah. But as soon as you, they see me, they assume I'm a certain way. Yeah. Um, so it's like, even if I was to wear it, like I've had people say, you're lying. You're lying, you ain't got this. I could pull wow. up all my medical records and somebody still wouldn't believe me just because of their own ignorance and it. You know, it stems from people not opening their minds, teachers not teaching it, parents being a bit ignorant and not teaching it to their kids. Um, so I just don't bother. Just... So how do we how do we fix this? Is it just general awareness and, and... Yeah, I think it's getting better. Like in Sainsbury's, ugh, I, I don't <laughs> shop in Sainsbury's because you know cost of living crisis, but. <laughs> They say all disabilities are not visible. Please be mindful. Okay, right. Every shop needs to be doing that. Yeah. And it's, it was so nice to hear that. Um, and I'm like, yeah, okay, we're slowly getting there. Mm. But yeah. Where, where do you shop then? 
Are you I'll go everywhere. Asda, Audi, okay, Tesco. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I only do Audi, Lidl. If you want some, if I want like nice house stuff, I'll go like Sainsbury's or yeah. Like Sainsbury's the stuff home. there is good. Yeah, yeah I want, like that stuff. Yeah, that's alright. Yeah, <laughs> but Audi. Yeah. yeah, no, Audi is good. I prefer Audi over Lidl. <laughs> do you? Yeah, I do. Why? I don't know why. I actually don't know why. I think it's easier to shop in Audi. I think it's the layout. Yeah. Because I was in Lidl earlier today, and they actually have more things. They have a mm. lot more things for the house, a lot more selection. Oh, do they? Yeah, yeah. They have power tools. I know it's not going to apply to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I well, like my power tools, yeah. I, I do stuff like that. I do normal stuff. Oh, like, right. I put shelves up. I'll dislocate okay, a good. shoulder in the process. Oh, no. <laughs> but I'm kind of... It's just me. Do you know what I mean? It's just me and my son, so... Yeah. I kind of have to do that. And how old is your son? He's eight. Okay, right. So does he help you around the house quite a lot and... I try and avoid that because he's not my carer. He's a child. Wow. Well, um, yeah. So he needs to know that as well. He needs to know, mm -mm, your job is to have fun, listen, and do your normal chores as a child. Um, he worries. He gets worried because mm. I've had um, too many heart attacks. And one of them, he was asleep, but he saw the ambulance come. Okay, so right, he yeah. then come downstairs. My mum was here at this point. Um, so he does get scared sometimes, especially if I'm like, I have a lot of surgeries. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, no, I'm literally, I'm going to FaceTime you as soon as I'm awake. Um, but it's just reminding him, you're not my carer. I think, I think that's really good. Yeah. I yeah. think, I think a lot of people don't, don't know the difference between, you know, keeping a child innocent and kind of keeping yeah. a child. Exactly. And, and I'm, then, yeah. I get called an alternative parent a lot as well, which is strange. What does that mean exactly? I don't know. I feel this soft parenting does, is just silly, but then <laughs> the too hard parenting is silly. Yeah. I think you have to find a balance. And like my son never went through... People always say, he was such a good kid, you're blessed. I'm like, no, a lot of hard work went into that. That was a lot of like me putting yeah. it into him. Yeah. I think it's how you talk to your child and... You as a parent, you have to evolve. Mm. And not every time admit when you're wrong in front of them because they need to remember you're the parent. Yeah. But know that mm, maybe I didn't need to say that or do that. Um, so I feel like you need to just tap in a bit more to your child. Yeah. And how would you advise a parent to have a, a good relationship with a child? Every parent is different. Every child is different. Um, one thing I can say, life is too short and something could happen to your child, something could happen to you. So that's how I get through every day. Like I could, an organ could just rupture and hemorrhage right now. What was my last thing I said to my son? Did he know that I love, like I do that with everybody. So I avoid having arguments. And if I have an argument, I love you. We're good. It's fine. Let's move on. Because mm. something could happen to me more than... I hate the saying when people are like, oh yeah, but anyone could die get hit by a bus. But knowing that that day could happen very soon, yeah. puts stuff, it puts it into, you know, it just makes it... Into perception. Yeah. Yeah, it makes it harder, but it does make it easier to live day to day. Because you're like, no, I got through today. Didn't end up in hospital. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so I think just knowing that time will run out and being happy... Um, every parent gets frustrated, everybody gets annoyed. Just having your own coping mechanisms, getting a good routine, and just chill. <laughs> with, with EDS, is it hereditary or is it...? Well, yes. And I wasn't fully aware of that until I was five months pregnant. Okay, right. Um, which was really, really hard because if I fully knew, they were like, oh yeah, you, it's genetic and it's this, but da, 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 it can skip loads of generations and stuff. Mm. So I wasn't, I went to my, um, my EDS specialist at the time and I was like, listen, if I have a child, will my child have it? Very unlikely, no. When I was five months pregnant, I got called in to see a geneticist and they were like, yeah, there's 50, 50% 50 chance. Oh, right. And wow. I felt so guilty because pff, I'd never put anybody through what I went through as an adolescent, nor an adult. Um, and there's even signs now, 
I'm not one of those parents that, oh, did that happen? Has he got this? But he's got one leg longer than the other. It could just be random. It could be connected. I don't know. But making sure he's doing his sports, um, doing physio, keeping him active, eating good. Hopefully he'll be fine. But yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's genetic. Does that, so does that mean that someone in your family probably previously yeah, so had we it? Yeah, I think it's my grandma, so my mum's mum. She had a few symptoms. Yeah. Because it can affect everything, literally everything. Mm. Like, you get migraines because you've got autonomic nervous dysfunction. So part of your brain dies and the channels of like dizziness, headache, sickness, you have to like kind of work them to another part of your brain, but that's part of EDS. So, so many different things connected to it um, that she had like a few symptoms there. My mum, she had a few hip issues. Um, so there's, yeah, we can definitely see where it came from. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's quite a lot to kind of learn about the about it ABS. Is. Yeah. It's very complex. Would you say you kind of understand everything now or did it take a while? No. Um, yeah, it definitely took a while. <clears throat> I don't know. I feel like there's always something new to add. Um, I don't think I'll fully ever learn it because things are always changing. Yeah. Um, but I know what I've got now and I'll, every day I'll learn what I need to and deal with what I need to. But it's, it's very complex. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can imagine, yeah. yeah, yeah. What was, what's been the craziest experience? Is it probably a heart attack? Mm. No, I feel, it, maybe it was my first spiritual awakening, I don't know. But when I had um, my spinal surgery, I was in intensive care for a while. Yeah. And I couldn't move, like, because the metal had to sit as well. So I just remember laying back, and I was on that female-only ward, because I was an adolescent. But um, I remember waking up and having this full-blown conversation with this little Caribbean man. And he touched my toe and I was wiggling it, I was moving it. I was like, oh, okay. And he kept saying, you're all right, baby girl, you're all right. And I had like remembered his face and everything. So my mum come back and I was like, can you get the man back? He really yeah. made me feel better. Can you get him back, please? She was like, There's, there was no man. I was like, there was a man. 100% there was a man here. Anyways, she was like, no. Years go by, bearing in mind, I've never seen my granddad. He passed away young. He came over on the wind rush and a lot of stuff happened. Um, so he died before I was born. My dad showed me a picture and I was like, that's the man. Wow. That was the man at the bottom of my bed. It was him. It was my granddad. Wow. So my little 12 year old self saw a spirit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so yeah, it was kind of mad. It sounds quite comforting. It was quiet, like, yeah. Yeah, it just made me feel you're going to be okay. Because just imagine you can't, all you can do is blink. You can wow. barely talk. You can't move your neck. You can't move your fingers. You just can't move. D like weeks like that. Um, and obviously they had me on morphine. They had me on everything. But that was like the one moment in that journey where I thought, oh, I'm going to be okay. I felt my toe, but I didn't feel my toe. <laughs> it was all in my, yeah. But yeah, that was, that was a nice comforting experience, but very strange. Yeah, I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> but it, sounds, it does sound nice, yeah. yeah. It sounds quite comforting. Yeah. Would, would you say you're quite spiritual, religious, or do you feel connected to anything? Um, mm, yeah, I mean, I do, I do see spirits, I do see signs. I have weird, it's weird, it's quite bad, but it's weird. Mm. I have dreams, and I, they are premonitions. They are. And it's dark, it's proper dark, because I'll know, I get when something bad's gonna happen, it comes in my dream. Um, like my aunt, I was very close to her, she was dying, and um, so I got ill, my aunt got ill, and my grandma got ill, all in the same year. Wow. Um, but fast forward 10 years, my grandma's passed, and my aunt is losing her battle with cancer. But, um, she, she was in a hospice and it was December time and I think it was on like the 5th of December. I had this dream, night for December, night for December at 9pm. That's all that kept coming into my head. So I woke up oh. straight away thinking, oh my God, she's like, she's gone. 
she wasn't, she was still here, thankfully. I called my mum, I called my best friend, and I was like, Auntie Jane's gonna pass on the 9th of December at 9 p.m. Wow. She passed away on the 9th of December at 9 p.m. And you got the dream on the 5th? Yeah. So it's four days later? Yeah. Wow. And I, I felt like such a, it was like a burden, but not, because I'm mm. thinking, did I cause that? Did I actually, did my dream, <laughs> but I know it, I didn't, but it was just. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what, what do you think? Do you believe in like a higher being or just yeah. you just feel connected to, to feel something? Feel as a higher being. Yeah. Um, don't know what. Everybody has their own beliefs, but there is something. Um, you said, I know a lot of people who are mixed race or have mix of races have, have a lot of, um, well, they had a lot of complex issues growing up, mm. especially in school, because I think in certain schools in London, did you grow up in London? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was it was tough for some people, wasn't it? Yeah. Do you, did you find that for yourself <clears throat> as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think, yeah, growing up, I didn't. I knew I was Irish. Didn't know where my dad. Like my dad's name's Krishna. Like didn't <laughs> really know where you know that side came from. It wasn't really spoken about. Yeah. Um, which led to a lot of confusion. Um, as an adult now, like I completely understand why because. He didn't have the best upbringing. Mm. He had a very, like, he's a very good man. And um, he didn't have what most of us have, what at least one parent that's loving, got your back. He didn't have that. And um, so there was a lot of, like, my granddad came over on the Windrush generation. He came over to work. Like, he was, like, an electrician and did the towers and stuff. Wow. And when he came over here, he got beaten up by, not the Skinners, like the biker boys that listen to Scar, wow. but are racist. I don't know what they're called, the Hell Boys, or there's something like that. Yeah. Um, and that left him quite traumatised. Um, but it never was really, because obviously it was a very traumatic situation, it was only till I was a bit older that I was like, no, seriously, why do I look like this? Mm. Why does, at the time, why does my eyebrow connect? Why do <laughs> I have these certain features? <laughs> and... You know, you know, why do I have tan skin and green eyes and jet black hair? What is that? I don't, because I don't look like my white side, yeah. but I look like you, Dad. Mm. Um, so I kind of, you know, opened up and started learning more and embracing who I was. Yeah. Um, in school a lot. Yeah, I remember a situation um, where a girl was adamant. I said I was from Ghana. 100% mm. adamant. And this is like, she can't bring it up 10 years later. I said, um, no, I said, I'm Guyanan. It's very similar. People do mishear it. Yeah. Um, I said, no, 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 I'm Guyanan. Maybe when I was 13, I may have slipped of the tongue and said it, but no, like, I am from Guyana, yeah. Guyanan. Um, and it's like, even that, so what's the issue? It what is the issue if I did slip of the tongue or you slipped of the tongue? And like, what is the issue? Why does it bother you where I'm from? And that's why I got a lot in school. Oh, right, I see. Yeah. She wants to be this, she wants to be that. And it's like, no, no, no. But I look, I, may, I mainly get Spanish or Turkish. I do get that a lot. Mm. It's like, well, no, actually, I'm mm. Irish, Guyanese. Um, so I come from both immigrant side of the family. Yeah. Um, so it's a different, you know, that horrible saying, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. Mm. And there was a lot of Irish and Caribbeans that gravitated towards each other in those times. Um, of course, you can't compare the two um, at yeah. all. Um, but yeah, I did, I did get a lot of, yeah, a lot of weird stuff and it tied in with my health because I'm like, mm. you lot are getting on to me about my skin colour, telling me that I'm, so basically you think I'm lying about where I'm from, Lying about my disability, horrible, absolutely horrible. I imagine, yeah. Um, and I, well, she's still my friend to this day. Well, two of them, Megan, who is Irish Caribbean, so we clicked. Um, and my friend M, they, still my friends to this day. And the only two people that I hold high from the school yeah. um, and will always have time for because they stood on their own, they weren't sheep. Like even yeah. teachers at school. I had a teacher dislocate my shoulder. Jesus, how did that happen? She dragged me back. I was leaving, so I would do half days. 
but apparently I was bunking to all the girls. And that's where hiding my disability came from. Yeah, I can, I can because imagine. Because it's like, what the fuck? And even the teachers, you're not helping, you're meant to be helping. Mm. Like my mum really fought hard for me in that school. Um, I have nothing but negative things to say <laughs> about them. <laughs> but that, that could be another time. But um, <laughs> it was very traumatic, very traumatic experience. Was, was there some backlash with the teacher? Did you want to see happen with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we, um, yeah we, we did a few things there. <laughs> um, but then I'm like, I can't bother. Yeah. It's done now. Let me move on to the next thing. Yeah. Um, but that's what, I think that's what makes me more selfless and more want to help because you don't know what someone's going through. You don't, you know, some, a lot of my friends always go, I don't want to come to you with the problems. Well, they used to, because I made it clear, come to me. Um, Cause you know, you go through so much and it sounds so silly. And I'm like, no, no, no. Whatever you're going through is a lot for you. So talk to me if I can help, because no matter who I talk to, I'm not going to get no help. Yeah. But if I can help in, an emotional situation, a relationship, whatever I can do, I'll do. Um, and it kind of like, I'm a good friend and I'll always be there for anybody. And I've got good friends as well and a good-ish support system. Um, but it's it, accepting that no one will get it ever. Mm. So, mm. It's lonely, <laughs> it's fucking lonely, <clears throat> but yeah. Um. So I'm sure your son's mixed as well? Yeah, he's predominantly Guyanese. Yeah, he's, what, sorry? predominantly Guyanese. Okay, right, right, right. So he's mm. got um, <clears throat> half yeah. Guyanese, quarter Jamaican and quarter Irish. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Does, he, does he have questions? Because, all right, for me, I'm, I'm mixed race as well. Yeah. But growing up, I'm not sure if it's the same for you. My parents didn't really explain much about where I'm from. Yeah, literally. It was just wasn't spoken about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 The only why I know about Ireland so much, because we used to go there, like on the six yeah. week holiday, because it was cheap you get on the ferry. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'd stay with like my uncle and stuff like that. Um, but it just wasn't. Our, our parents' generation, there was so much trauma. Uh, there was yeah. so much discrimination mm. that it was hard for them to talk about. So then we didn't know. Yeah. So yeah. then it's like we, yeah, I think because it was qu quite tough upbringings, they didn't really have much to say to us about it or they, would, they didn't want to bring it up. But it's like, um, I mean, I had questions. I'm not sure if it's the same for you. Did, you. did you find yourself kind of asking certain things? And Yeah, as I got older. Yeah. Yeah, yeah as I got older. Um, <clears throat> you just want to know. You just want to know who's that person, where did they come from, what did they do? Why is it like that? Why do we look like that? There's yeah. so many questions to it. I agree. Um, Does your son have questions for you as well? <laughs> Anything I, to do with food, family or culture? Or? <laughs> so <clears throat> I made clear from, well, I knew because I didn't experience that. I wanted mm. him to know where he came from. Yeah. Um, so he very much knows who he is because I didn't know who I was. Well, not like where I was from and stuff. So I, I make sure he knows where he's from. He knows, you know, about, he has experienced, unfortunately, he's experienced racism, which wow. really upsets me that kids are experiencing this, but we yeah. know it's there. Because um, his school, there's only a few, like he's predominantly black. Mm. Um, there's, it's quite white. Okay, right. And, um, you know, he's got long hair. He's got hair down to here. Like, it's got beautiful, beautiful, proper Guyanese hair. Yeah. Um, and he's always getting called a girl. And he's always, uh, there's certain things. Um, I feel like it builds character. And I'm like, no, you tell them you're a boy. <laughs> Boys can have long hair too. Um, but then there's certain things. Like, he had, he was playing with this girl in his class. And the younger brother came up and said, you're kind and not allowed to play with my sister. Wow. And he didn't know what that meant. Yeah. So I was like, she's like, what? <laughs> so it was dealt with the teacher. I went in and I spoke about it. Yeah. And um, I'm like, but this kid was younger than my son. How is he knowing? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you mean you're kind? Like, I don't get what you're, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. And I don't even feel bad for the kid because that's not your fault. That's on your parents because you're too young to understand. I'm like the youngest parent by probably 20 years um, in that school as well. Oh, wow. So I stand out <laughs> and my son stands out. 
um, which can make it hard if things happen in the school. Yeah. I get, I know that I'll be labelled as the angry, confrontational one. Um, or I'm young, I don't know. Or the young Because people yeah. think I'm like 18. I'm like, it's good. <laughs> I know it's good, but yeah. it's like, no, I'm close to 30, but thank you. Mm. So they think there's just a stereotype that I'm dumb or I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> or you're a young mum. Yeah. Right. And it's just like, mm, no, no. Um, and it's... You know, I try to talk to people in the playground. I try to engage for my son. Mm. Um, but it can be a challenge because I don't want, you know, I want to engage and stuff. I want to talk. I want to, but sometimes it feels like nobody wants to talk to me. Oh, <laughs> so <no. laughs> I just, yeah, I just, hi. And just keep it stepping. No, I understand. So, yeah. but, your, but your son gets some, he, yeah, he enjoys school. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. He loves, That's like, good. he loves school. And that is a really important thing for me is that he loves school and that he's in a happy environment like his teachers are amazing um they've got a good class to be fair very good class um and yeah but it's just he's understanding racism now um so yeah unfortunately yeah do you, do you feel like that's something that has to be spoken about and, and i think taught? yes yeah uh, maybe a few years, I'd be like, oh, but I want to protect him. But actually, yeah. that could be more damaging. Um, they're not... With kids, you have to filter. So I'm not going to talk to him like he's an adult about it. You just have to take it down a notch. And if he has questions, I'll always, always answer them to the best of my ability. Um, and then I'll be like, just <laughs> come back to me on that one if I need to think a bit deeper. Um, but I think, yeah, it does need to be spoken about because it's still very much there. Yeah. So you can't really avoid it. So you had your uh, son at 20? Yeah. Did you, did you feel young at the time? Did you, did you feel like a young mum then? No, I don't know. I feel like I'm an old soul. Okay. Everyone always says it. Yeah. Um, maybe because I had to grow up quick. Yeah. So I had no choice but to grow up at that, the age of 12. Um, so yeah, I didn't get to do anything that everybody else got to do. Mm. Didn't go out, didn't go party in. I've only ever been to two clubs in my life. Um, mm. Yeah, just I didn't get to experience teenagehood. One percent maybe, um, but I didn't get to experience, and that's quite damaging as well. Mm. Um, even now, like I can't really go to busy places and things like that. Um, Is that in case someone kind of just knocks, knocks into me? You yeah, because yeah. you can knock me, and yeah. the shoulder is hanging out, and I just get like I just too much because. Mm. I imagine that person knocks me and I'm going to have to call an ambulance so I can't fit it back in. <laughs> then I get embarrassed. I'm like, I'll just, I'll just go there. I'm fine. <laughs> oh, no. So I just avoid if I know something could happen. Um, but yeah, no, I never felt like a young mum, which is strange. Okay. It, it makes me feel strange that people could see me as a young mum. Like I was living independently before I was a mother. I was driving since the age of 16 because I was allowed to drive at 16 because of my health issues. Oh, right. Um, oh. So, yeah, I mean, I just feel like I've been here for like 100 years. I'm tired. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I've never really felt young. And do you feel like the other mums are just old, essentially? I am not going to answer that question because right, that's me, backlash. <laughs> <laughs> let me rephrase it. Then. Okay. Um, do you feel like women or, or couples or, or people are having babies a lot older? Don't even a, get a, a bit later on in, in life. Yes. Yeah. And listen, I'm up. <sighs> I hundred percent. If you having a child older mm. because you've been trying for a decade, I'm so happy that you're a mum at fifty because you've been wanting this for years. Yeah. But it's become a trend. It's become mm. a trend to have a child at a certain age. Um, I think it's really unfair on the child and unfair on yourself because. It's a lot harder to do it in your forties than it would be your twenties. Yeah. Um, and I've got first-hand experience. My sister's an older mum, mm -hmm. and the difference. And I can see she's tired. He's two. <laughs> she's tired. <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, what's her in the thirties or? Thirty-eight. Okay, right. Thirty-eight. Late thirties, yeah. Um, so, and it's hard for her. Mm. Um, Is that because the kids so much energy and? Uh, no, I feel like my child was full of energy. You mm. just have to match it. You yeah. have to match it. Um, <laughs> not every day, but I just think it's, it's really... Why the, 
because I searched it up because I don't want to talk on stuff that I don't know. So I looked yeah. into certain things and it's actually really dangerous Mm -hmm. For a woman to have, I didn't realise how dangerous, because you get like preeclampsia, you're more at risk of getting diabetes and mm -hmm. all of these things, which is mm -hmm. scary. Um, I feel like we're, you're more at risk of something happening to you as a mother and your child, which is really sad. Um, I feel like if you're fit and you're healthy and you're, but you have to think about it. If you have a kid at 45 and you're, your kids, when your kid's 20, that you're going to be 65. And then, do you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. each their own. But if you're going to have a kid later on, just make sure you're physically... You've looked after yourself. You've looked yeah. after, yeah. But yeah. saying that, I'm a disabled yeah. mother. So, I mean, <laughs> maybe mentally, mm. not physically, mentally. You're mentally ready for it. I think physically too. I think it's okay to say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but as a disabled mum... <laughs> I would say mentally, because if you're mentally tired already yeah. and you're mentally at the point where you're like, oh my, pff, no, then you're not going to enjoy being a mum. Okay, right, yeah. And yeah. like, I love being a mum. There's never been a moment where I'm like, oh my God, like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> I've loved every minute. And because I almost died having my son, it puts a lot of things into perspective for me as a mother as well. Oh, right, I didn't know. Yeah. 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 Are you okay to talk about that? Yeah. How that? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So I always knew when I was going to have a child that I had to have a C-section mm. and I had to have in between 34 and 36 weeks just because obviously this baby growing in me is going to be crushing on my organs, yeah. my lung, <laughs> lung. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, and obviously I've got metal in my spine. I've got a few broken bolts. They're like stuck, but they're broken. Um, so it was always going to be a risk and I had a horrible doctor, she was horrible, she got sacked because we did a massive complaint like that woman was going to kill me wow. if I, if my mum didn't step in and be like what are you doing, I would not be here today um, wow. but I had him at 36 weeks but um, I had a collapsed lung and a stroke and I was in intensive care for three days. Wow. Yeah. Jeez. So I had to be put asleep was always the option because I can't have an epidural because <laughs> my spine's already broken. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I remember bits of the first days, um, but I was just, because they wouldn't, you know, they don't charge you if you can't walk. So I was like, I am going to get out of this hospital and just walk, because I was, I needed to be home, I needed to be safe. Yeah. In hospitals, you do get a lot of discrimination. Like when I sit in the waiting room with my mum, they're like, Sakira, and look at my mum. Firstly, she doesn't look like a Sakira. Wow. <laughs> but secondly, because she's older. Yeah, yeah. You're assuming this, and yeah, she's it happens the patient. every time. Wow. Every time. Um, so there's a lot of horrible stuff that goes on in hospitals, which I'm sure a lot of people with disabilities and invisible disabilities can agree on. I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like the language. <clears throat> so taking my blood pressure, you're going to dislocate my shoulder. So I, wow. I physically can't do it, but let me prop a pillow, let me do something to help. Yeah. They'll put, I refused. Well, I didn't refuse if I physically can't do it. So it's things like that, um, mm. that they just think you're just being a bad patient. I think like, that's, that's disgraceful, yeah. yeah. It happens so much. <laughs> and that's why I, I really needed to learn how to put my joints in place myself. Yeah. And I needed to self-help because, yeah. And what, what are your thoughts on the NHS then? I think obviously it's overworked, it's overrun. Yeah. I think there's, I feel like I can say this because I was once paralysed and, you know, I see, I try to keep my hospital appointments down. I don't want to be in hospital every month. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously my spine and my organs are very important. So I'm quite a few times a year with that. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of people that don't realise how important exercise and physio is. Mm. Um, I'm hearing a lot of people my age with no health issues talk about all oh, my back or stuff like that and I'm like your back really but put me aside <laughs> it's like well are you doing any exercise <clears throat> are you doing anything to help yourself are you doing any swimming you don't have to properly swim just float loosen mm. your muscles we're in a generation of not much self-help even mental health um, just finding your thing that helps you get through the day. Meditating is good for people. I used to do that. I still do. Um, 
there's so many different things that can help people, but you're the only person that can help yourself. Mm. Um, coming from my darkest of days on being suicide, well, com trying to commit suicide, to wow. now, I was one who got out of that. Because it was only me who was going to get myself out of that. Yeah. Because nobody's ever going to get it, and I think people need to get that. We just need to spread more love, but also help ourselves a bit more. <clears throat> Is that, was it because of your condition you, you were thinking about suicide or? Oh, well, I didn't think about it, I tried it. <laughs> okay, right. That was kind of the turning point where I was like, I'm meant to be here. Um, yeah, it was obviously I lost everything. I, I was grieving for a life I once had. And I've got this new life and it's not really nice. <laughs> and then everything was going on at school and I'm thinking, oh my God, even grown adults. I just don't get it. Hmm. Um, I was like, there's just no point. What, what am I going to do? See, I tried three times. It was rushed to hospital three times. Um, and yeah, I wasn't successful. And then I'm like, well, there's a reason. There's a reason that I wasn't successful. Yeah. Um, and that's when I turned it around. That's when I was like, no, I'm here for a reason. I'm here to help people. Um, I'm here to inspire and motivate and do whatever I can to help the weaker me or the somebody who just needs it. So yeah. And what, what age was this? 13. Wow. 13, 14. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with the with exercise. Yeah. Um, do you what do you find exercise that you can do? Or? Uh, yes, yeah, so I do. Mm. I call it physio. Okay. Because <laughs> it is my physio, so there's I have to do physio for my muscles to keep my joint in place. So my muscles are always tense mm. to keep my joint in the socket. So right. I do a lot of like arm ones um, and leg ones. Um, and I try and do some hydrotherapy Which and just is? start just getting in the water and mm. doing what I do on land in the water because you're, you're working harder because you're resisting but then it doesn't feel you're working that hard <laughs> um, so yeah I do a lot of self-help but then I wouldn't, I'd love to go for a walk around the block mm -mm, I, my legs wouldn't take it mm. so like I can't do the normal exercise things I just have to keep to what I can so do you find it quite hard to stay healthy or do you just have to watch what you eat and kind of... Well, because I don't have the gallbladder anymore, I can't eat meat. <laughs> so, oh, right. um, and fats, which I never really did. I've always <clears throat> been conscious on putting good stuff in my body mm. to help what's already failing, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, I've always been good. Um, yeah. So what's your favourite food then at the moment? Mm. <laughs> Well, it's always been brown shoe chicken. Ooh. I know, that is my favourite. But that's meat. I can have chicken, so that's poultry. Oh, right. oh, oh yeah, that's there's good. a yeah, difference, yeah. you know. Oh, sorry, so sorry. So you've got, yeah. you got meat, which Ed educate is... Educate me, yeah. Yeah, so you've got <laughs> poultry, meat and fish. Yeah. Oh, okay, right, right, right. Poultry, chicken, I learned all of this. So yeah. apparently we're meant to be calling chicken poultry. But yeah. So I can eat chicken. Okay, um, that's good. But I can't eat anything else. Okay, so no meat. Um, what what other foods are your in your diet then? Kind of everything else except yeah. meat. Okay, yeah, right, yeah, and fats and stuff. I try and avoid. So um, no fast food or no. Mm. I try and limit that. What you know. So more like a home cooked meals and yeah yeah yeah. And why can't you eat meat then? Is it because of? Because um, my gallbladder, which is the organ that. <laughs> <laughs> um, my gallbladder um, yeah. is which died um, that processes all Meat. the stuff in foods all your nutrients and stuff like that so my body doesn't absorb what it should so the dumbest thing I've heard is take some collagen tablets mm. if it was that easy <laughs> I feel like EDS wouldn't be a condition yeah. but um, so yeah the gallbladder Literally, you need it because once that's removed, you're at high risk of bowel cancer. Mm. So that's also why you shouldn't eat meat and stuff. Um, so she has being conscious. How was lockdown for you then? Like with, with your No, it was easy. And I didn't struggle because I've been locked down since I was 12. Okay, right. So. Right. So you're wondering what's the rest of the world panicking about? Yeah, and I'm like. Stay at home. You lot are lucky you can go out with freedom mm. like that, you know? Yeah. And. Um, 
Yeah, I really enjoyed it with Little Man as well because he wasn't at school, I wasn't at, well, I was still working because obviously we're a community centre and we was a safe place, mm. um, but it was more from home. Um, but it was nice, it was really nice. And um, I live quite close to my parents as well. So it was just like the four of us. That's nice, um, yeah. yeah. we're like 10 minutes away from each other. So that was good. I mean, there were times where I was like, oh, I just want to just go eat dinner or something out. But I coped with it a lot better than a lot of people. But that's because I've had years of, a whole year of not being able to walk. Mm. So you're not going nowhere. Um, so I, yeah, I feel like when you've had that the last 16 years of your life, seeing people get really, oh my God. And I'm like, could you imagine being that since the age of 12? Yeah. Like having surgery, six months recovery. Having another one, three months recovery. You know, so my life is like an up and down <laughs> lockdown. <laughs> yeah. Is there is there a test for EDS? I think there is now. No. Not really. There's no. there would be a genetic test. Okay, right. Um, but they kind of see, like, what confirmed it for them was my heart. So I've got mitral valve prolapse with reg regurgitation. So basically, one of my valves has collapsed. So instead of it opening that way, it's gone in. So then the blood doesn't pump properly. Wow. Um, that was kind of like, um, yeah, she's, she's got that. <laughs> so was so. COVID a scare then for you as well? Yeah, it was. It yeah. was. Yeah, no, it actually was. Um, because even if I get the flu, I could end up in hospital. Wow. So yeah, I was a bit shook. I was like, imagine I get this and this is what ends me. Not a heart attack, COVID. So <laughs> I was a bit like, mm. so I just kept people away for like the first year okay right yeah um but m my close friends didn't want to come near me in case because imagine that i can imagine the guilt yeah. yeah yeah and especially where my heart's compromised my lungs are compromised my organs are compromised it just but i did end up catching covid mm. and funny enough no it was not really funny <laughs> it was my spine that it troubled it oh, was right. my it attacked my spine um I was being sick, couldn't hold down any of my medication. Wow. And it was my back, I couldn't sit down, couldn't stand up. It's just like, that's where the virus went. Um, my head was a bit, but th those two weeks was horrible. Mm. But yeah, luckily it was mild. <laughs> that's good, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, do you know anyone else with, with EDS? One other person, mm. yeah. Um, yeah, I met them in hospital. They're quite a bit older than me. If you just Oh, she's going to kill me. 53. Um, oh. Yeah, we get along. She's got the mild down version. Mm. Um, so it's still not the same, which is hard because I just wanted someone to get it completely. But no yeah. one will. Um, but we have like certain things that, you know, I can show her some physios that I do that help. We can just sit there and be like, oh, how was your day? Do you know what it wasn't? We can actually be honest yeah, and stuff. Nice which is nice. I say that, but I'm always like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm good, how are you? Um, but yeah, I don't, I've been to like EDS conferences and stuff. I sung at one years ago. Nice. Yeah, um, yeah I will get canceled if I speak on that. As I say, <laughs> self-help is important. And I feel like people can use things as an excuse. Um, I wasn't in a wheelchair because of my EDS. That was very much my spine. Yeah. Um, and two separate things. So my spine scares me more than my EDS. My spine and being paralysed scares me more than having an organ fail on me. If you don't have your spine, you have nothing. Wow. Um, so it was very hard to see people with EDS in wheelchairs who don't have spinal issues. So why were they in wheelchairs? Oh, because their knee would dislocate here and there. Okay, I see. Yeah. So it was that type of culture in the EDS community. And I'm like, oh, I don't fit in here. <laughs> Where, whereas you've, have, you've had to deal with a, I literally deal with a lot have, more. Right, and, yeah, right. I see, yeah. And my worst fear is being in a wheelchair. Mm. I would literally rather all my organs be taken out than be back in a wheelchair. Wow. Yeah. I can, yeah, I can imagine that's quite hard because... Sorry, the, um, the conference where, where you're seeing everyone. Yeah, and you're thinking, you there know, was one woman on a, on a hospital bed, like a, the stretcher bed thing. Wow. I was like, 
<laughs> is she being rushed to hospital or is she just came like this? She came like that. <laughs> thinking, why? She was laying like that as well and I'm thinking, I need to get out of it. It was all the way in um, Man- Birmingham. It was in oh, Birmingham. Right. At the conference center? Yeah, the conference okay, right, yeah, there. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, even when I was singing, the disrespect, like, bare talking and stuff. And I'm thinking, wow. as soon as you see somebody with a condition, but they're not, they haven't got excuses, or I'm not, like, self-pitying, they then just don't want to connect with me no more. Wow. Or they don't want to have that respect, because then it makes them look at themselves. And I'm like, listen, if you're having a down day, have a down day. You don't need to do that physio, just chill out. But as I said, I think the resilience in people is just, somebody's got to have something Mm. um, where, yeah, it was just an interesting experience. I mean, do you feel like in society we have like a, you know, sometimes a, you know, poor me culture or? Yeah. Yeah? 100%. Oh, fair enough, yeah. 100%. Um, It can get hard sometimes when I'm like, being in chronic pain for 16 years I don't I can't remember what it's like not to be in pain wow um and you're complaining about a, a broken toe I mean it I, yeah I, I understand that definitely. but yeah. that's their own that might really affect them yeah yeah so but it's hard <laughs> it's I feel like we need to be more resilient we need to be strong mm. um but then of course have down days yeah have day, like days to feel mm. Like, you need to scream, cry, whatever you need to do, we all do it, but, yeah, there's a lot of poor me. I mean, I'd, I'd say you are, you do seem like quite a strong, resilient person as well, yeah. Luckily, yeah, because I feel like if I wasn't, I wouldn't be here. Do you feel like you were always that way growing up, before you even had your condition? I feel like, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the youngest of four and my two older brothers, apparently I used to play fight with them, but be hysterically crying in pain because they hurt me, go right back in for some more. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. Um, so I feel like, yeah. You always had the fight. Yeah. Yeah, and the resilience. Get yeah. back up, dust yourself off. Cry mm. in the meantime, but just do it. <laughs> just get it done. <laughs> um, but yeah. Did Drake contact you? His management. Okay, right. And what was that about? <laughs> so I did a cover of Kyla, Do You Mind? And I got a message, and bearing in mind, I didn't see this message when it was sent. Like, I feel like it was a week or two after. Mm. Um, the management saying, hey, I love this song. Can we chat more? Wow. And then I got a message on my Facebook from Crazy Cousins. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. I'm like, what's going on? Like, I don't know what's going on. Um, so they thought it was my song. Kyla, do you mind the cover I did? It wasn't my song. Oh, I see. Yeah. So then Crazy Cousins, who produced... It wasn't it Crazy Cousins, Funky House, Kyla, do you mind? Crazy Cousins, yeah. They... Um, yeah, um, yeah, 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 they produced that song with Kyla. Yeah. So obviously they found the source because... Well, I couldn't lie anyway, could I? I couldn't you couldn't even be like, oh, yeah, it's my song, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so he saw my song before her version. I mean, that's quite interesting. I know, yeah, that's, that's quite cool. good, isn't it? <laughs> and I was like... Keep up the good work. Let's do a song then. But yeah, just like, <laughs> I plugged your song back. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it was me, the reason. And I, yeah, it annoyed me. <laughs> it wasn't my song. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't my song. No, fair so, enough. So yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that was cool. But I mean, it, it must have made some sort of impact because it's like if they didn't, if he didn't, if your, if Drake or his management team didn't see your song, then they wouldn't have made that. Exactly. Yeah, they wouldn't it's have made money. the remake. I yeah. know. No, but also people under the comments of the video, another song Drake copied. Mm. Like, I love this, but it's not my song. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking it went like my views, 20,000, 10,000 started going up on that video, yeah. which was like six years from wow. when the song Drake song came out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that was um, good. So when you're saying Drake, say, you know, the comments of people saying yeah. Drake copied another song. Yeah. Do you think, do you, would you say Drake's a culture vulture? No. <laughs> I don't know. No, don't ask me this one. I feel like it could be two ways. He mm. takes people's songs and compliments them. Mm-hmm. Um, or he takes people's ideas and doesn't pay homage. I don't know. It could be either way. <laughs> um, I feel like 
I do feel for him because somebody needs to be telling him our slang. So that song, I need something and a slash. Well, don't you remember that song? I it's need... Like, Oh, he needs a blem and something and a slash. Oh, and I'm yeah, like, yeah, isn't yeah, that yeah. going to the toilet for a guy and he's using it as a dance for a girl or something? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you lot really... Who is doing this to him? I don't know who's giving him the, the who, name. Yeah, though, who's yeah. saying that? Have you seen his latest one Ra- on Radar? No. He's with uh, Central C. And no. he's, yeah, when you go home, watch that because there's a lot of UK slang really? in that one. Really? Like, he did it like a UK artist. All his, no. Yeah, yeah. All, all his... Um, all his lyrics were UK. Like, as in, like, he actually rapped like he was from the UK. You're lying. He's talking about N15, Tottenham Lane, and, and this and that. Yeah, yeah, honestly. But why? It's Drake. It's Drake. <laughs> it's Drake. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't get it. that. Yeah. I don't get that. Because I feel like you as a person, your, um, where you come from is why people like your music or your story. Yeah, yeah. That's not your story. <laughs> That's why a lot of people are saying, you know, calling appropriation and culture vulture. Is that what people say? Listen, I don't really yeah. go online like that no more. Um, <laughs> but is then that what the, people say that a they, lot? They do, yeah. But then there's other people that will say he's just showing genuine love. It's more like a, a homage or a tribute. Yeah. Mm. I feel like part of him is definitely, like, genuine. Yeah, yeah. Um, another part is, like, read the room a bit. Know, like, who to do it to or... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, personally, I like that he doesn't have a limit. I feel like he, he yeah, because he always pulls out different music. stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he's always puts banger music out. So yeah, I feel you like can't he can't really he, hate he, too much. Mm, he hit like any genre. Any yeah, artist. he actually yeah. can. He actually yeah. can. Hairstyles. <laughs> Hairstyles. I've had many. Oh. I've had many. Are you the first to do that one? I mean, apparently, Carilla Devel was, but you know. <laughs> um, yeah, recently. Yeah, recently. I think last, I've had this for like a year now. Okay, cool. Um, obviously, my, you have to touch up the roots on the blonde side. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, people, I've seen a few people be inspired by it. Mm. Um, yeah, just, <laughs> it's like nose rings. I've been wearing them for 12 years. Okay, right, right. How old am I? Around 16. Mm. Yeah, 12, yes, oh, yeah. good maths. <laughs> um, 12 years I've been wearing them. Well, one, and then I got the I've done a copy of it like eight years ago. Um, and that's a cultural thing for me. Um, but I do I see you. certain certain styles that I wear mm. be um, inspired people. Yeah. Ah, you said you had a few jobs. Uh, three. <laughs> three jobs? I got three. <laughs> yeah. Um, community engagement manager, mm-hmm. a piercer, and a tooth gem artist. Okay, right. Yeah. What is a tooth gem artist? Put tooth gems on people's teeth, design them for mm. them, um, that kind of stuff. So is that like people do it day to day or for special occasions or both? So it's become such a trend now, tooth gems. Oh. I remember doing it with nail glue. <laughs> I know everybody around me in Lewisham did it with nail glue 10 years ago. Um, but yeah, it's become such a trend now, like, people just want them for everyday life. Sure, right, yeah, because right. they can last up to nine months, so wow. people, and if somebody wants it for an occasion, I'm like, just cure it less. But <laughs> yeah, it's become a proper big thing now, tooth gems. And it actually, wow, it actually saved them for nine months. Is that with nail glue? You said? <laughs> Oh, right. <laughs> that's, that's like the getaway, the old school. That's what we used to do 10 yeah, years okay, ago. Okay. No, like I did a course, you've got to have all like the dental glue okay, and right, the bonding yeah. and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Everything, because it's your teeth. Mm. I wish I knew that 10 years ago, but <laughs> yeah, you do it properly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, no, people are loving them. That's cool, good. Yeah. That's a very niche job. That's very cool though, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do enjoy it. And what's the wildest like, design you've done? Or well, that someone's asked for? Oh yeah, I had somebody ask for me to do dark gems so it looks like there's food in their teeth. What? I, yeah, that is literally my reaction. I thought, do you not want dark gems to... I thought it was the other way around. Like, yeah. You don't want to look, it to look like that. And they were like, no, 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 I want... <laughs> I want... My, I said, really? Is, okay, we're going to do what you're paying me. I'm going to do it. Yeah. So they wanted it in like the corners here. Wow. Yeah. And they're trying to get rid of someone. 
maybe <laughs> get someone out there like, maybe yeah. or they're trying to set a new trend we'll yeah, see yeah. if you start seeing people with you know <laughs> i'm gonna know you've yeah. done it yeah <laughs> <laughs> um what are your goals maybe just before 30 then what are your goals hmm that's a good question <laughs> To sing again like I used to, put okay. myself back out there. Yeah, I had my first rehearsal session yesterday yeah. in a few years. How did it go? It was good. It was emotional because my musician passed away in January. All oh, right. Um, so yeah, it was he, my friend, he's a, he's a sick guitarist. Mm. Um, but I want to do like a memorial for him. Um, and I want to do a couple of his songs. So it was weird hearing nice, yeah. somebody else play our songs. Yeah. Um, but he was, he's the guy in the video of me with the Kyla Do You Mind. Like, okay, he right. is, um, was an amazing musician. Um, so yeah, I need, to, I need to do it for him as well. Like, That'd be nice, yeah. He would cuss me if I was to stop singing. <laughs> he would. He used to call me Angel since we met when I was 14. And... Um, he just lost his brother and he was going through some stuff and I sat there and uh, we was at a jam session um, and I started talking to him about my life and then I sung for him. It was actually Drake's song, um, When a Good Thing Goes Bad, that song, Doing It Wrong. Mm. And I told, yeah, we was just talking about my health and stuff and he was like, you're an angel, you've been sent to me. And ever since then he called me Angel and my son's name's called Angel. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that's nice. I'm yeah. glad, because at least Stevie can live live on. Yeah, yeah. It'll be nice to, to, to hear you sing his songs. Oh, yeah. Is it songs that you made together? Yeah, like covers we did. Some of his songs I'd mm. love to do, because he had an album. Oh, right. Such a talented, wow. like, so talented. He could play the guitar, he could play the drums, the piano. He could sing. That man was amazing. Um, so yes, yeah, songs that we did, I want to do. I just think I'll start getting into covers first mm. and doing what I used to. And then when I have, where I'm, where I want to be, I'll then start releasing. Is, is it hard to sing? Because, you know. Yeah, it was. Yeah. But I did it, I pushed for it. Um, okay, what, what are your socials? Where can we find you? Um, Sakira's piercings. That is literally my only <laughs> social. <laughs> Is that on Instagram? Yeah, it's okay, on Instagram cool. and TikTok. I mean, t Jesus, TikTok is, is it me or is it difficult? It's me, okay. I, I, I mean, I don't personally... Do you not have it? I don't, I have it, but I only watch videos. I only just scroll through. Like, I don't, I don't post them. The algorithm and stuff. Yeah. It's not the same as Instagram, so I need to learn <laughs> that one. But some people say it's a lot easier. Maybe because I'm used to Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'm getting maybe I'm getting old. <laughs> maybe I'm getting old tonight. Oh, fair but enough. yeah. Sakira's piercings. And what about the music side? Where would where would you be releasing in, in the future? I f well YouTube. Yep. But I think I'll go on Instagram and TikTok. And that would be I don't know if my stage name used to be Kira Shea. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if I'd keep the Kira Shea or my name. The only reason why I did Kira Shea all those years ago was because I got really annoyed if anybody would call me Shakira. Okay, right. So I was like, if I say Kira Shea, no one, you know? You can't say it wrong. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. you literally cannot say it wrong. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll just do Shakira from now on. Cool. And how do we, how do we spell your name? S-U-K-E-R-A. Cool. So hit you up for piercings and tooth, tooth gems. gems. In yeah. South London. South yeah. London. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>